I'm sitting on about a dozen good conversations that I'm going to find some time to edit them in the next several months. I wish I could just knock them out and upload them like once a week or something, but my goodness, they take so much time for me to edit that I've, I've just been, I've been getting really lax about it. So um, some of the conversations I'm sitting on include a talk with a guy who thinks that that uh, a god is conversing with him. He's not only conversing with the god, but the god converses with him. Two really good talks with a Muslim who says that... Hi. Hello. I've seen you out here before. Yes, hi, how are you? Good, I'm I work in the student union. Oh, hi, how are you? Good, good. I've seen you out here before just walking around. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand you're doing an audit, right? For your class or something? I was, I dropped it. Okay. Um, the only thing that I ask is that you take that off because you this can't one? affix anything to any pillars, buildings, anything oh, like that. Oh, is that right? Yep. Oh, dang it. It's the first I heard about it. Yep, so... Hmm, I got another one up there I'll take down. Yeah, take that one down too. But oh, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. It's actually part of the UTSA policy if you want to look that up. So. I think I have a printout of the sheet. Do, okay. you, do you know what section it is maybe off here? Uh, section 8. Section 8? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so that was... Um, apparently she's with the university. She said, I can't affix my cameras to the poles. This is the first I've heard about this and I've been doing this for a while. I think they're just looking maybe for ways to make what I'm doing a little bit more difficult. How are you? What's new? Nothing. You got your pool cue. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you up there. <laughs> Good. I saw you getting kicked off and I was like, ah, oh, I better just say hi. I'm not getting kicked off, but she just said that I can't hang my cameras anywhere. Oh, that's interesting. You can't post, you, yeah. That's kind of strange. I don't want to leave my bag unattended. Do you want to walk over there? Okay. some Mormons coming my way. Hmm, they're definitely Mormons. Sorry, Church of Latter-day Saints. They're handing out tracks. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna definitely get a conversation with them. Oh, hey gentlemen, how are you? Good, what's going on? Is that what that one is? I saw this up on the thing. Somebody posted a, a thing of Jesus over here. Did you see it? Heck yeah, that's one of our pictures. Is that one of yours? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why there's a picture of a girl here. Yeah, I don't know about that one either. Yeah. Maybe you kind of threw that on there. Okay. Add it to it. I don't know if you guys stuck that up there or somebody else did. Yeah. Huh. Do you want one? Not really, okay. no. <laughs> Would you guys be interested in doing an interview about your faith and why you actually think that it's true? Sure. Okay. Why not? What, what does it entail? It entails asking respectful yet challenging questions about how you arrived at your conclusions. Okay. Hmm. And let me just caveat it here. Yeah. This isn't to trick you or yeah. be a got you or to make you look stupid. But it's to like interview like genuine people like out there. Yep. Now, I usually talk to people about all sorts of claims. However, it's quite obvious that your claim, I think, would be that, that your God is real. Yeah. We can even talk about a completely different claim if you want. We can set aside the claim that God is real and talk about something else. The idea here with what I'm doing is to take your claim and respectfully explore it with you by listening, by figuring out what your best argument is for your position, and yet gently challenging how you got there. Okay. You want to give it a go? And here's the other thing, too. You have yeah. full control over this. Okay. In fact, if you want, I could even put some blue tape over your name tags so your names aren't even apparent. I can even blur your face. Or at the very least, at the end of the conversation, if you are worried about it, you okay. can message, I'll give you an email, and you can say, don't use, you know, don't use the footage or blur our faces or whatever. Okay. The idea here, like I said, is not to embarrass you. Yeah. It's to be a, a helpful aid in your reflection on how you arrived at your conclusion. Okay. Yeah. And what is, what is this for exactly? I'm doing street epistemology. 
Have you heard of it yet? No. You haven't? Please okay. Me. Yeah. Well, take these for, for one thing. Okay, thank you. Yes, street epistemology is a conversational technique that you can use with anybody when they make a claim. Okay. In fact, there was just a guy that walked by here who says he's been watching my videos okay. and it's helping him engage with his father on politics. So instead of arguing and debating, huh. he uses questions with his dad now. And they've had much better dialogues because he's adopted this approach. Very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you seem hesitant. You seem like you're ready to go. That's kind of the sense that I'm getting. And that's I only fear not that I'd be wrong, but that I'd be saying the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. Could there be value in saying something incorrect and discovering later that there's maybe a better way of phrasing it or a better argument for the view. Absolutely. Yeah. How could you discover that you actually have a better argument for your position if you don't currently surface the ones that you have? Fair point, absolutely. I want to help you figure out what your best argument is for your view that LDS Church has the truth. Okay. And I want to try to approach it from a very neutral position. Even though I, I may be a Mormon, I may not be a Mormon, I can even disclose to you where I stand in your claim before we even go, if you want to do that, at the risk of possibly making you more defensive. And if you're okay with that, I'd like to move here so I can actually get you guys on camera too. Yeah. But that, there's, there's no pressure either way. Okay. Just like a YouTube video? Is that what it is? Yep. Okay. Ideally, yeah. I appreciate you stopping. You guys are okay with me recording this Absolutely. so far, yeah. at least? Okay. Please. My first name is Anthony, by the way. Anthony, pleasure to meet you. I'm Elder Okay. Okay. Those are your last names? Yeah. Yep. Uh, how do you feel about me? Do you want me to beep those out? Would you rather... Are you okay with your name no, showing? No. I mean, we, we represent Jesus Christ. Okay. We do our best, too. So. Awesome. I appreciate your honesty and your willingness to share, you know, share your reasons for thinking that it's true and yeah. also maybe your methods for confirming the reasons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. And I don't like to keep people for too long, either. I okay. usually set a timer to keep it really brief. Okay. How and, long are we going to be expecting? I usually set it for four minutes, however, with two people, it's almost impossible. Okay. So maybe I can maybe do it in maybe seven minutes or eight minutes. Okay, yeah, we can, we can try our Can you spare that? Yeah, how's it going, brother? Well, I'm also not setting a timer to rush you. Okay. I'm setting it to just respect your time. Okay. Let me move this just a little bit so it can get both of us, all of us. Okay. I sometimes don't know where people are going to are gonna stand until okay. they actually stand. Oh, you just you place us where you. I think that's going to be okay. I think the sun probably won't be hitting that too much. Okay. Well, let's start with this. What brings you to the campus? Uh, are you members of you guys go to the school here or anything no. like that? No. Okay, I don't I don't go here either. But we're allowed to be here. Yeah. yeah. We're allowed to be here to engage with the students, Absolutely. and I think we're going about it in different ways. Of course. Yeah. Uh, if I could give my view on it, I think you're probably going around telling people what they should think. Maybe. Are you, um, are you are you doing that? Whereas whereas I'm asking people why they think things. Okay, absolutely. It, I don't want to put words in your mouth though. That's no, not we're, perfect. We're here sharing what we believe and just helping people come to their own conclusions. And we're inviting them to try things out that we found works in our lives. Yeah. Such as praying and reading scriptures, and really just trying to find who what they believe. Okay, you're out here asking people what they believe. Is that right? Essentially, yes. Okay. Is one of your goals to have them believe what you believe? Absolutely. Okay. I think so. I, I appreciate think so. your honesty. Of course, yeah. I suppose if I thought that I had the truth of the matter when it comes to a God existing, then I would be out here doing exactly what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. The important thing to note, though, is that the things that we share with people, you never expect them to just take our word for it. That's the last thing we want people to do. Hmm. We believe that this should be a very personal conviction and very personal witness that you have okay. from this experience and so what we do as missionaries is we teach brief lessons sometimes just 10 minutes long and that's what we do a lot on campus just little quick lessons do you do them right here on the street or do you invite people to come to like an after an after school thing or? either or i mean we have meetings on wednesdays and of course sunday mm -hmm. service hmm. but we like to people meet people on campus just to help them out in the middle of the day. We believe that Jesus Christ helps people in all aspects of their lives. Okay. Not just spiritually, but also academically. And okay. so if we can bless anybody's life through a quick 10 minute lesson, that, mm. that's our goal. Did it take more than 10 minutes for you to come to accept it as truth? Or was there some other, was there some other path that you each took? It's a little bit tougher when I'm talking yeah. to two because no, maybe yeah, you no, guys no. arrived at this conclusion differently. No, of course, we both arrived at it a different way. We were both raised in the church. Um, mm. I personally just, I didn't really have like my own belief of it for a while. It was... Even though you were raised in it? There was, there was a point where I, I questioned it myself. I had to get my own answer. I couldn't just rely off what my parents told me the entire time. Beautiful. And so that's when 
I really did my own research. I delved into it. I looked at both sides of the argument. Hmm. You actually had some questions about it and you decided to research it. Mm -hmm. And then, if I understand right, the research concluded when you found sufficient answers to think that it's true? Yeah. Okay. What was your... Why are you out here actually? You must think that it's true to some extent. How did you actually get to your position? It would be very true. Um, mm -hmm. I was born in the church like he was, mm -hmm. but I fell away in high school. And I think that was just a result of being born in the church. and Fell away in high school? Yeah. What is, can you define what that means? Fell away as in no longer living the standards of the gospel. Okay. Is that equivalent to questioning or is it different? Um, I think it'd be questioning because I was questioning whether or not it was true by the actions. If I knew it was true, hmm. then I probably would have followed the teachings of the church, right? I see. So you must have been questioning at that moment as well. Yeah, I I believe that. I Don't let me put words in your mouth. No, that's no, not no, the case. No, no, that's okay. I believe that I knew that Jesus Christ was real and that God is real, mm -hmm. but the fact that they knew me personally. I don't know if I knew that. I, I believe that they're more of an uh, abstraction at that point. When you say they? God and Heavenly Father. God and Heavenly sorry, Father. Sorry, I meant, I, Sometimes I don't speak your yeah, lingo, no, so no, you, no, you no, might sorry. have to translate a little bit for I me. I said that wrong. Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. Okay. Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. It sounds like research brought you out of your questioning phase. What brought you out of that questioning phase? Uh, testing it. Testing so it? We have a belief called the Word of Wisdom in our church. There's a ton of people coming and it's going to get really loud. Okay. So we can either wait till they pass and or um, raise your voices really loud. Okay. Because I want to make sure that it gets picked up by the, by the speakers. Who wants to wait or speak up? Why don't we wait and just chill out just a little bit okay. if that's okay. If you're not pressed for time. No. Are you cold a little bit? Not really. No? Okay. I should be. Are you from a colder climate? No. I am from a hotter climate. Arizona. Arizona. Hotter dryer. Nice. Nice. I think these are seniors who are touring the campus. They might be future conversation partners for us. How long will you guys be in the San Antonio area? Are you from the area too or no? No, I'm standing from Utah. You're from Utah? Yeah, so as missionaries okay. for our church, the males get called on a mission for a period of two years and it's 24 7. Two year service. Two year yeah. service. It usually in a different state than where you're from? Yeah, or country, depending. Mm -hmm. I met a woman in an airport about six months ago when I was touring schools in Florida with my daughter. Yeah. She had just finished a tour in Australia and she, no, sorry. She was finishing a tour, I think in Nashville or something. Yeah. And she was working her way back to Australia. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So she really was, and I think she was gone. And I, that was probably the first time I met a, a female missionary yep. for the LDS church. Yeah. There's a lot of us. The stereotype is more male, but there's hmm. a lot of what we call sister missionaries now. Okay. And they serve for 18 months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Before that crowd of people walked by, you mentioned that you had the ability to test the claim that these gods are real, that there's Jesus and there's, did you say the Holy Spirit? Yeah, yeah, the Holy Spirit. essentially. Mm -hmm. And I did that through what they call the Word of Wisdom. The Word of Wisdom. Yeah. Was there a testing component for you as well, or yeah. Yeah. was it strictly research? It was research and, and testing. Mm-hmm. Okay. This could be a back and forth too, by the way, if you want to ask me questions. This isn't just like a one-way di one directed thing. Can you tell me a little bit about the testing methodology that you use to get to your conclusion that this is true? Of course. So the word of wisdom, essentially, is don't drink coffee or tea. We don't smoke. We don't drink. We don't use illegal drugs. Mm -hmm. And These are dictates, though, right? Like, how, are these... I'm sorry, did you want to finish? Consider commandments, yeah. Is this how you went about testing to see if it was true? Yeah, I just... I, and cold turkey on all of those. Hmm. Yeah. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. Okay. Because there's promises with the word of wisdom that if you do these things, if you don't drink coffee, if you don't drink tea, if you don't do, if you don't smoke or do illegal drugs, that you'll find your body to be in a healthier condition, your mind to be more alert, and all mm. these things, all these benefits that God can give you in your life. Hmm. Was this how you went about testing it as well? or was I went it through the Book of Mormon, which is what we usually help, like this is the ultimate thing that we have people test is the Book of Mormon because it's the keystone of our religion is what we call it mm -hmm. because if the Book of Mormon's true then our religion stands and if it's mm. not true then our religion falls. How did you test the Book of Mormon to determine that it was actually true? So there's a lot of people who do worldly tests of because it claims to um, be a record of the people in the ancient Americas and so people go through they compare 
the record in here to the record like archaeological sites and stuff like that and there there have been similarities and stuff like that mm. but there's a promise this is a spiritual promise so it doesn't go through the worldly sense that if you pray to know if the book of mormon's true you will really receive an answer okay there's something in the book that says i want to repeat this back so i'm yeah. not so i'm totally understanding it and yet also for you to hear what it is you're saying yeah if i understand what you're saying there's something in the book of mormon that says you can do a set of actions to get an answer that will confirm to you that the book is true yes okay and that's your test you did that i suppose yeah okay did you really do it yeah. you did okay because yeah. uh, sometimes i meet a, people that i'm wondering did they really do it or yeah. did they just read this that says that you can do it and maybe they thought about doing it or they heard other people doing it yeah or maybe they sort of like they thought about it maybe over the weekend and they, they, they just say that that was me doing it i think that's something that i know for one I really had to do it because this is two years of my life and I'm putting on my line and the rest of my life afterwards I'm putting on the line here. Do I really want to go mm. and spend two years of my life preaching for a church if I don't truly know it to be true myself? Okay. It just I'm, kind of seems fake and there's a lot of social pressure in the church sometimes. I, but sure. I, I don't really give into social pressure. Though. Good for you. Good for you. Seriously. I'm, kind of, I'm a stubborn guy. <laughs> oh good. No, I, I think uh, the social pressure that can come with, uh, that, that was actually like seven or eight minutes. Okay. Can I finish my thought? And then you can ask me any question you want, or we can keep going. I would imagine that the social pressures to conform to certain beliefs can be driving a lot of a lot of the reasons why people actually think that it's true. But I'm getting the sense that that's not the reason that you're, that, that you acknowledge that that's a possibility. Yeah. There's, there's some people that have that social pressure, but really what we try to teach in the church is to not be socially pressured into it. Find your own, mm -hmm. like, test it for yourself. Yeah. I love this idea of being able to test our beliefs to see if they match the claim. How did you determine that this was a successful test, that you actually, that the claim passed the test? I know that you each did t different tests. Maybe we can go to you First, because your, yeah. your friend here has been talking for a little bit, but can you take me through your testing process? Do you want to tell me a little bit more about it? How did you test it? I understand that you, you decided to stop consuming specific items. Correct. What was it about that action that led you to think afterwards, check mark, this passes the test. You know, sometimes we sound a little bit crazy in the church because we talk about these miracles and blessings that come into our lives when doing these things. Mm -hmm. And you may think to yourself, I'm not going to drink a cup of coffee and miracles and blessings can happen in my life. And, mm -hmm. I mean, whether... Strictly people, from refraining from drinking coffee... Correct, yeah. You were noticing things happening in your life to confirm to you that by not drinking coffee, and that's what the book says, this is how I can test the book to be true? You know what, that's actually not even in the Book of Mormon, the coffee part. We believe that that was a, mm. a uh, I don't want to create it, a revelation that was given to a prophet mm -hmm. that we shouldn't do that. Okay. And Would you mind talking just a little bit louder? I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, sorry yeah, about yeah. that. That's okay. Um, so the way I guess My I, voice naturally goes answer. lower too, but yeah. <laughs> just, just for the pur purpose of recording this. Of course, get. yeah. Uh, the amazing thing about the church and about the Book of Mormon and about the Word of Wisdom and everything that we do in the church when we test it. If we're looking for an answer, the answer we get is very specific to us. It's a very personalized spiritual answer that we believe comes uh, from God. So almost undeniable when we get the answer. Is it a personal answer to you too, or would you differ yeah. on that? There was a time that I was alone in the car, listening to music, and just that personal answer. For some reason, a thought came straight into my mind, like, it's true. Hmm. When I, was, I wasn't dwelling on the subject, I was just kind of minding my own business, doing my own thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that thought went straight in my mind, straight in my heart, and I felt mm. the Spirit. Mm. Okay. I felt peace, I felt joy and happiness. Okay. Is it possible for somebody to have a personal answer like that for a confirmation that your holy book is true, or a completely different holy book is true, or a completely di different God is real? Do you think a person can have a personal answer after embarking on a series a, a, a series of research and and um, testing, and they it pops in their mind that it's true? Could somebody actually have that happen to them and be concluding that something is true when in reality it isn't? Here's here's kind of my thoughts on that: is God is good, right? God is perfect, and He leads us to do good things, and so. If he exists. If he exists. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I'm going off the assumption that he does because I, I for one, know that he does. Hold on a second. <laughs> I don't know if I could let that, that go. That, that's my knowledge is I know. You started with the assumption that he's real before embarking on testing to see if he's real. I Just looking at the world and everything has shown me that there is a higher power. Mm. And that's just the only conclu logical conclusion that I can draw to. So that's the assumption I started off with, mm. is that there is a higher power. Did you start with an assumption as well? Yeah, of course. You did? I think okay. that comes to just a faith or a hope that things can be better and that there's an answer to the questions I had. Last question, and then I would like you to ask me any question that you feel like you would like to ask. Okay. Why would you embark on testing if you've already assumed that it's true? One, because I didn't have the answer for myself. And two, because I wasn't happy in my life. And so hmm. any sort of hope for happiness was something that I was sincerely looking for. I was looking in personal development books and seminars, whatever I get my hands mm -hmm. on. Looking for this peace of mind of why I'm here, how can I be successful in this life? Did this belief fill that hole for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a whole bunch of more questions that I'd love to ask you. Yep. However, we have another cadre of teenagers walking by. Yep. So it's going to be noisy. And uh, I said that would be my last question. Yep. Unless you want to keep going. Uh, whatever you whatever you prefer. Well, my preference would be to keep exploring this with you. Okay. But, you know, let's make this a back and forth. Do you want to ask me a couple questions about my stance yeah, on your claim or anything like that? What is, what is your belief? Mm -hmm. Can I wait? Can we just wait if you don't yeah, mind? Yeah. yeah. I'd offer you some water, but I just have... Um, no. No, you're all good. I just have this. Do you guys have something to drink with no, you? We'll, or? we'll get some. Okay. Do you want to have to check my phone real quick? See, Not at all. I missed the phone call. Mm -mm. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Some kid just like hopped right in front of my camera and made a face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the joys of like filming outdoors. and I'm sure. It's, it's so unpredictable. Uh, okay, so we're approaching the tail end of this group here. Yeah. Ooh, they're noisy. At least there's not a jackhammer going on in the background. <laughs> That's usually the thing they have to deal with. This is this is no problem. Yeah. Okay, so feel free. My name's Anthony. Ask me anything that you'd like to know about my position on your claim or why I'm out here or anything along those lines. I'll try to be as open of, of a book as I possibly can. Okay. Let me just directly ask you that then. What are your thoughts on this, what we're sharing with you? I, I get a little alarmed when I hear people who say I've started with the assumption that it's true and then I set out to test it to see if it is because I'd be worried that I'd be imbuing a bias in my outcome okay and I, to my question too I'd be wondering well why would I actually care about testing it if I have already started with the assumption that it's true which makes me wonder I know this is about you asking me stuff but yeah. you're making me wonder do you really care if it's true or not if it's not true or at the very least, you discover that you don't have good reasons for thinking that it is. Would you want to discover that? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think? Um, I didn't start off with the assumption that this specific religion is true. I started off with the assumption that God is real. And I didn't know which religion hmm. was the true one. And that's the testing that I went about and did. And was okay. To see if this is truly the true church. What was your assumption? You said, I think you had said that you had also started with an assumption. Did you make a delineation between God and, and the religion? I'd say yeah, for sure. I, okay. I guess it wasn't, I believe that the religion is true, mm -hmm. although maybe I would have already, but... Do you think that your upbringing could have any bearing on your initial assumption that the God was real? Absolutely. I think if okay. I grew up Hindu, I'd probably think that that God is real. Yeah. I think it's the same God, but hmm. I mean, we all pray to the same God, essentially. If somebody was raised in India to believe that Vishnu was real, and then later they discovered a, a specific Hindu religion because they started with the assumption that that was real. Yeah. And maybe they even set out on testing it. Yeah. And they noticed things that were happening in their life to confirm that it was real. Could somebody go through all those steps and be 100% sure that it's true when in reality it isn't? The answer to that question I would give you is that the Spirit of God, we believe, testifies of truth. And so the spirit can testify of what you may consider to be a universal truth or, or principles. 
that are true. Now, whether they have the fullness of the truth, mm. I I don't know if I would say so. But if you're doing things with the intention of best following God and you're doing your best, I believe that the the Spirit of God will testify to you that you're doing good things. And he wants He wants to bless us. That's what we believe. Does it require starting with the assumption that the God is real and being exposed to it at a, at a young age to believe that the Spirit, what'd you call it? The Spirit of God? Yeah. That, the, that Holy Ghost. the Spirit of the Holy Ghost is real. I mean, go ahead. So you're asking, Do you understand my question? I can repeat it. So you're asking if because we were raised this way, that's why we, you have to do it. Okay. Yeah, please. Sometimes I ask questions and I even confuse myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to confuse anybody here. The last thing I want is anyone to be confused. Yeah. I think you were saying yeah. that um, the way that your situation would be different is different than somebody who was raised with a belief in India and came to believe that Vishnu was real and then gravitated to a specific religion and they start seeing all these benefits and they even see positive results to confirm their testing. The way that you're not in that category, you're different because the the spirit of uh, the spirit of the Holy Ghost is real. So my point though is, how does a person conclude that the spirit of the Holy Ghost is real? Does that also start with the assumption that it's real, or something else? I would think so. I think it starts with the faith or hope that God is real and that He wants to bless us in our lives. I think that has to has to be within everybody who's looking for. And honest answer to the question. What do you think about what he said about faith and hope? Are, would you say that those are required in order to be sure that what it is you're thinking and you're out here promoting is actually true? Hmm. I'm trying to think about that one because you're take your time. I should have said this much earlier. I, I'm not Try gonna not, let him influence. Please me. don't. I'm, again, and, and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> We're both pretty stubborn people. But there's some people who don't have any belief in Jesus Christ or even any sort of higher power at all, and all of a sudden they'll start recognizing things like that in their life, and so they don't initially have that faith in a higher power yet. Mm. They all of a sudden, will recognize something and say, "Wait, maybe that's a higher power." Could our fellow in India tell me the exact same thing? Sure. That he's noticing things happening in his life, and it's he maybe he wasn't even exposed to it. Maybe he never even started with the assumption that the God is real, or that his religion is true, or that the spirit of Vishnu is, you know, he gets that feeling in his bosom. Yeah. Um, how could we actually tell for sure that what it is you're believing is true? How can we really test it and be as unbiased and neutral on the claim as possible? That's kind of the thing is you can't really test it by worldly means. It's mm. it's all based on the person, and no amount of science or testing can ever prove one thing or another. Mm. It just stands. It's untestable? In a proving 100% certainty, worldly sense, not to the fullest extent. Are you 100% certain that the Book of Mormon is a source of truth? Yes. Did you have the ability to test it? Yeah, I've been. That's what that's what the research was. Is there's people who have done in-depth studies on like even mm. the way that the Book of Mormon speaks, the way that there's different authors in it, mm. but mm. it's all translated by one person. There's there's different scientific researches that have been done into ancient texts, mm -hmm. into the Bible, and other Hebrew texts against this. There's archaeological archaeological studies that have been made and that have been compared to things that have been put in the Book of Mormon about temples being built and mm. there being civilizations of millions. Mm. And yet, in order for somebody to validate that, to, to conclude that it's true, they would have to embark on the test that the book itself recommends that you do. The spiritual journey. The so spiritual no journey. no amount of secular learning can prove God. Okay. It would take the entire essence of needing faith in Jesus Christ out of that. Say that again? It would... If you could prove using, like, if you could prove 100% certainty mm -hmm. that God is real, then you no longer need to believe in Him and have that faith. It, it no longer is a, a test. Because that's, that's something that oh. we believe is that oh. you need to be tested that there's a God. It's not the, just, hmm. you need to go through a test. Does that make sense? This is what I hear you saying. It may not be what you're saying. It almost sounds like you're saying 
it's more virtuous to believe that it's true without testing it and take it on faith that it is true. true. If that's test not what you're it, saying... Testing it in what sense? Testing it to the point where we can determine that it's factually true or not. Like God is factually true? Or like God is factually true, or maybe that the claims in the book are factually true, or that the feeling that you're getting when you abstain from drinking coffee for a significant amount of time is a good verification that it's true. It's not that it's more virtuous to go without testing. You should definitely test and try it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You should definitely know what you're talking about. I almost sense that I'm getting two messages here, that, that it's not necessary to test it, and that, uh, that you should be testing it. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but uh, let me let me just put it this way: Can a person be a hundred percent sure that that book is a source of truth without any testing whatsoever? No. You, you I need, think to, it you need to be like an opinion, then an uneducated opinion. It would be an uneducated. Yes, this Book of Mormon, or any other holy book for that matter, possibly, yeah. would be an opinion if the person didn't have the ability to adequately test the claim. Yeah, absolutely. And you can do that with any book. You mm -hmm. Magic Treehouse, this is the best book ever. Mm. What's inside of it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Way cool picture on the front of it though. Mm -hmm. Great that, stories. That's why it's the Make best me book. feel good when I read it. Yeah. Huh. Last question, and then please ask me questions, because yeah. I really do want this to be a back and forth. Okay. And I have a tendency to keep asking questions in return. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's part of my nature, I suppose. Um, if you discovered that you don't have a good way to adequately test the claim, mm -hmm. meaning there's no way that I can really determine that it's true or false in this life, if you discover that you can't test it, yeah. would you lower your confidence in the claim? Very much so. I feel like if someone came up to me with a new version of the Bible and said, look at this, this is truth, I wouldn't be, like, if without a way to test it for myself, I would kind of sit there like, what do you want me to do with this? How do I know if it's true? Okay. Testing is important for you in order to conclude that this is a true claim. Yes. How do you feel about that? What do you same, think? Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got like a million more questions for you, but uh, <laughs> gosh, I'm so tempted to keep going. I really think we can fully explore your justifications and your methods for arriving at this conclusion if we stuck around for another 30 minutes. Um, but one of the advantages of this approach yeah. is to go at the speed that my conversation partners are comfortable with. Okay. Because oftentimes I ask questions that maybe you never heard before. Yeah. And hopefully that's the case. And hopefully, remember at the very start we were talking about, well, maybe I would say something and then I'd discover that maybe that's not the best reason. Maybe there, it's not the best way to explain. Yeah, I yeah maybe it's not the best so reason. Sometimes myself it's like, <laughs> this is my excuse. Oh, wait, no, it's not exactly that. Yes, or, I really wish I worded it differently or used a different definition of that word or whatever. That was, that's true, but there's also mm -hmm. this, which is more the reason why I did it. I feel like I used yes. to excuse my parents. It's like, this reason. It's like, <laughs> well, it's kind of that reason, but it's more this reason. It's, you just yeah. kind of change your so Here's the way that I look at it. I kind of, I'm going to use like an American football metaphor. Like maybe we started at the zero yard line and then maybe we've advanced to like the 40 yard line here. Okay. Like I really think we've made some significant progress. But maybe you go back, and maybe as you're walking away, you talk about it, or you call somebody else in your organization and say, I have these really good questions, and what, you know, what's the best answer? You might actually come back here, and then we might actually start at the 10-yard line, you know, because you've come up with some better reasons. But I think if you keep coming back, and we can keep exploring them, then we can keep advancing or, mm -hmm. or uh, retreating down the field. Maybe it's not the best metaphor. I don't know. I get you. You get my point? I get what you're saying. Yeah. There's value in thinking about the reasons and methods that we're using it to get to our conclusions, yeah, even though we may have regretted how we explained it initially, I suppose. Wonderful, that was cool. Yeah. You want to so, ask me some questions? What exactly is this method that we're... There's a card, you can look all into it. I think I gave you a sticker. You. Yeah, you did. Yep. What, but what, what's exactly the method that we just used? The asking questions sort of thing? I was using questions to fully reveal your reasons for thinking that it's true mm -hmm. and your methodology for concluding that it's true. And testing was was a very important theme here. Yeah. Like, is it really important or is it not? You know, I actually am still a little kind of hazy on it for you guys. That, that's the thing is it's a mix of mm. testing and faith. Is You can test it to a certain point, but you can never get that 100% certainty. The rest you walk by faith. Mm. And that's kind of the, the mix. Yeah. Gosh, I have so many questions. 
How? Also, just so you know, <laughs> we have a website that talks all about this. That you can look all this up on. Oh, it's churchofjesuschrist.org. True. Yeah. I'm more interested in the beliefs that people around me are walking around yeah. with yeah. that motivate them to come out and engage with people and, and promote their, their views to see how did you get there? Okay. You know, did, did you really use a reliable uh, process? Can I ask you one more question? Yeah. It's about faith. Okay. I think you mentioned faith and hope. I, mean, I don't know if you actually really defined it yet, but my question to you is how big of a factor is faith in your 100%? Is it like what you need to get from a 99 to a 100 and you have all these other good testable reasons to get to the 99? Or are you at a 1 and you need the faith to get to the 100? Faith is the first principle of the gospel. Can you repeat that? So we believe that faith is the first principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Faith is the first principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yep. What does that mean exactly? I mean, it sounds important. Yeah. Yeah. Re relating it back to my confidence scale question, of course. if you can put it in numerical terms, how influential is faith in your conclusion, your 100% conclusion, I suppose, that you have it right? Well, everything. It's a, faith is essential. You can't reach that 100% without faith. Like you said, do we have the 1% or the 99%? Mm -hmm. And with the Book of Mormon, I'd say I have a 70 to 80% certainty that it is true scripture. And then the other 20% mm. is where I walk by faith. Mm. Did you require faith to get to the 80%, the 70 to 80%? So, again, I could probably say I had 10% faith just to test it out, and then 80% more was by the book, and mm. then another 10% I walk by faith. Okay. How about for you? Is faith a factor? In everything that I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. That was a great talk. Oh, you know, I also have these little things. Yeah. This, this is, I know you guys give something away. Yeah. I actually give something away to people who talk to me. This is a little gear because these conversations get the gears going. Mm -hmm. At least they're supposed to. And would you like to have one of these three pieces as a gift? Can I have the yellow one? Sure. I'll take the red. Okay. Thank awesome. you very much. And then if either of you see me out here again or you're, you're in a pair again or maybe you, they pair you up with somebody else or whatever, okay. or maybe you have somebody else in your organization who you think might be able to help us figure this out better, uh, bring them by. And, but in any case, you can come back and, get, and build out the set. If the weather's good and I have a little bit of time in my schedule in the morning to the early afternoon, I'm usually here. That's cool. Yeah. Can we email you if we have someone? I beg your pardon? Can we email you if we have someone? Yes. Like yeah. Yeah. In fact, a lot of people email me to say, hey, we're going to be yeah. in, in town on this day. Can I stop by and chat with you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Do you, you. do you have I any more questions it. for me? I don't even think I answered where I stand on your claim. I was going to say, I was, gonna, I was kind of wondering, where, where are you on our claim? On the scale from 0 to 100, where 100 is, I'm absolutely sure that this is true. Yeah. I can't be wrong on it. I can't be mistaken. On your claim that your book is a source of truth and that your God is real, I'm at a 1 or 2% out of, out of 100. Have you read the Book of Mormon before? I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Do you want one? I don't. Okay. Because I would rather have the people who think that it's true explain to me how they got to their conclusion and if it's testable and reliable yep. when you have really good reasons then I will accept your book so I am open to taking it so if we can't let's keep the dialogue open okay what, what time is it now we have a oh we don't have to come back we don't have to do it all in one shot by the way okay well we have a quick lesson at 1130 mm -hmm. with two other people and then we're actually going to a food bank for about four hours to do some service very nice so very nice we're a little bit short on time. No, no. I'm really glad you you gave me the time that you gave me and, and shared that with me. Uh, anything else? You can also email me after if okay. you have questions individually or if you want to meet again. Okay. Perfect. But yeah, if you see me out here again and you want to chat some more, hello. Um, stop cool. on by. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you again. God bless you. I really appreciate your time. A really good talk with two young men, Mormons. Of course, it's a little bit challenging when you have more than one person, but their beliefs tended to parallel each other quite a bit. They did acknowledge that they were... He's just turning around and looking at me. Um, they did acknowledge the possibility of each of them influencing the other person, so they were at least aware of that. That's good. Gosh, look at my whiteboard. I mean, there's just notes all over the place here. But... When it really came down to it, it seemed like faith was a big component for them to think that this was true. If they do come back, 
obviously we have to pick up a definition of faith from them. Their definitions might vary. And we're going to explore the impact that discovering that faith may not be a good reason or a reliable method on their 100% confidence that their holy book is true and that their God is real. And as you know from the hundreds of conversations that I've had, not misrepresent what they think about that word and how they're using that word and see what impact it will have on their confidence in their claim that this is true. It was, for the most part, fairly quiet. And it was really a really beautiful talk with two young guys who who were extremely honest and open. And that's been my experience with Mormons, for the most part. They seem to be really eager to share what they think is true, their reasons why they think it's true, and their method for confirming it and for testing it. And if they come back and they continue to be honest and open, and perhaps even if they come back by themselves, if they do bring somebody back like I suggested, more than likely we won't make as much progress as we could possibly make if they came back individually or in a pair again. Because I think they might defer to the other leader, I suppose, that they end up bringing back. Or even if they bring back an equivalent of their level, I would imagine that uh, they're going to probably be a little bit more guarded, a little bit more defensive, a little more deferential to the new person they bring back. It'll be kind of interesting to see uh, if they show up and if they do, who they bring back and the impact it has on their interaction with me. Great conversation. You know, you said that you're atheist, correct? I really respect that. I have a very large respect for people that are atheists because the way I view it is to me, it takes a lot more faith to be atheist, if that makes sense. That the idea that all of this just came from nothing, that it was just a huge <laughs> chance, that everything happened just so, so that we could be here, and everything just happened to work out so that we came here how we did. Mm. In my opinion, and I know that it is slightly biased, that takes a lot more faith, and I, I really respect that and your beliefs <laughs> and, That's interesting. and things like that.